everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another monthly mail art video for simonsystamp.com. Today I'm starting out with these two envelopes. One is a black envelope and the other is an ivory metallic envelope. These are both from Simon. And I'm going to take the nested circles dies and make a circle mask for each one of these envelopes. Taking out the different sizes of circle dies and kind of deciding which size works best. I'm going to go down one that's just a little bit smaller because I want a little more room on the top and bottom. So I'm going to actually place the postage stamp on the envelope before I even start decorating at all this time. And that's because I'm going to be doing a lot of ink blending with the pigment ink right over the top of where that stamp will go. And I want to make sure that I'm not going to have any problems with the postage stamp kind of sticking to the envelope. I don't want to have there uh, be any issue with it peeling off later because there's ink underneath it, if that makes sense. So now I've got some masking paper. This is masking paper from Simon, and I'm cutting out that circle die, and I'm gonna cut this out twice. I'm gonna use two circle dies, one for each envelope, and I'm also going to use the Felicity Snowflake, Bliss Snowflake, and Joy Snowflake from Simon. I'm cutting those out of some masking paper as well, and I'm gonna start by using those masks on this black envelope. First, placing that circle down onto the center of the envelope, and then I took um, a little bit of post-it tape. This is just some 3M Scotch brand post-it tape. And I covered up that postage stamp because I want to make sure that no ink goes over that postage stamp. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other envelope as well. I want to protect that postage stamp while I'm working on my envelope design. Um, you want to make sure that the postage stamp is still able to be canceled by the postal service so you don't want to have any kind of ink going over the top or anything that would make the surface too slick. So I'm taking those snowflake die cuts that I've cut. This is out of masking paper and I'm pressing those down onto my black envelope. I want the snowflakes to mostly kind of hang off the circle area. I want lots of detail remaining on the black area of the envelope. So I'm pressing those down really well. And now I'm going to put down a tonic easy clean mat. So this is down below my or down below my envelope. And I'm going to take some golden glitz delicata pigment ink. I'm going to ink blend this coming off of the circle. I want the most concentration of color to be right at the edge of the circle. So I'm moving in a circular motion, doing some nice ink blending. And when it comes to going over those snowflake dies, I also did a little bit of an up and down pouncing motion in some cases, just because I wanted to make sure that all of that really beautiful gold pigment ink made it into all the little itty bitty crevices on these snowflakes. For the other card, or for the other envelope, excuse me, I'm using three different colors of Distress Oxide ink, starting with Peacock Feathers, and I'm blending that out from the circle edge, from the edge of the circle mask, and I'm going to go all the way around this circle mask, and then I'm going to come in with faded jeans coming in from the edge of the envelope. And to protect my fingers from getting too inky, I am using more of that post-it tape just to uh, protect my fingertips. I'm going to clean off in between colors because I don't want those colors to mix. And then I'm taking black soot and come bring that in from the edge. So I have a little bit of a, like a lighter teal fading to a blue into like a grayish color. Because this is a ivory metallic envelope, so it has a little bit of a coating on the surface. Because of that, it really doesn't absorb the ink as much as other surfaces would. So when you use Distress Oxide ink on top of this particular type of envelope, it will dull it down a little bit. Now I'm using these snowflake stamps from Tim Holtz, and I'm going to use that Golden Glitz Delicata ink once again. I'm going to stamp these right over the top of all of that ink blending, and I want to make sure I have a really good inked up stamp before I stamp these down. I'm going to press this down, make sure I get all of those snowflakes pressed really evenly into the envelope. And then you can see how beautiful that is. It adds just a nice sheen and shine to the envelope. So I turn that envelope around. I'm using three other or four other stamps from that same stamp set. I'm going to stamp these down on around the other side of the envelope. And I did take a couple of the other stamps and added those into some of the gaps around the edge of the envelope as well. 
You can see all that beautiful shine from that golden pigment ink. So now I'm gonna remove this mask. I'm first gonna take it off my postage stamp. You can see that it saved that entire area. And then I just used my scissors to help pull up that mask so that I could then pull it up off of my envelope here. And I'm being super careful because some of that gold ink isn't dry yet. So I'm making sure to not put my clean fingertips into that gold ink and then smear it around. And I really love the sharp edge of that masked circle and it lets that really pretty pearlescent ivory metallic really show through. So for the other envelope, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use my scissors just to help pick up those snowflake masks. And you could see how beautiful that ink blending is right over the top. And it just leaves those black snowflakes there. I'm gonna peel up the circle mask just like I did on the other envelope, kind of holding down where I need to really carefully. And it, once again, such a nice, sharp, clean edge. I'm going to take my uh, heat tool and just heat set all of this pigment ink. It does take a little bit of time to dry. I could just have left this for a couple hours, but using a heat tool just for a few minutes or so, he, uh, heat it up as much as I needed it to be or dried it as much, and then the ink wasn't spreading at all. And I had to do that for this other envelope as well to make sure that gold ink wasn't smearing as I move on with the rest of the envelopes. So as far as addressing the envelopes go, I used a gold paint pen from Pilot and I just wrote on the recipient's names in the gold ink. And once again, like I've shared in the past, these mailing addresses are real and the recipients have graciously allowed me to use their addresses on camera or on the internet. So I do have their permission to use them. For the addresses, I used a white Jelly Roll pen. I really like to use this white pen because it's really easy to write with and I don't get very much skipping, but you do have to slow down when you're using it. And for the address on the ivory envelope, I use a pilot envelope addressing pen. And I'm just gonna put in the zip code here, right here at the bottom, making sure it's nice and even. And those are the envelopes for today. Those are the envelope designs. I think this is a really fun design. And if you wanted to utilize your Misty tool and a bunch of masks, you could actually do this design on multiple envelopes all at once and save a little bit of time. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's envelope designs. I will be back very soon next month with hopefully more middle art. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon. Mm -hmm.